from the high desert and the great American Southwest, I bid you good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be in the world's 25 time zones, each and every one covered like a blanket by this program, Midnight in the Desert. I'm Art Bell, and it is my pleasure to be here with you. Uh, this night is special, of course, because it's your night. No guests. We hold Fridays, as a general rule, open for no guests. In other words, it's your night. Say what you want. All right, so here's the way it works. We have rules. No bad language and one call per show. Now, on Friday nights, we also try to include the two-drink minimum. No, wait. Two-drink maximum. You know, I watch the sites, and people, I think, intentionally get that rule backwards anyway, right? Convinced of it. So, I can make the rule, but, you know, I just, I don't think it's going to get followed. At least that's my experience from previous weeks. I would like to thank, as always, uh, Telos, Joe Talbot, for the great sound, Keith, my webmaster of <sighs> long time. Heather Wade, my producer, and boy, does she do a good job. Stream Guys, LV.net. They get it to Stream Guys, they get it to you. Sales, Pete Eberhardt. Tune in radio, and of course, our own Amy Martin News. There are a couple of items before we open the lines to heaven knows what. Today, as you know, we've been following star KIC 8462852, and guess what, folks? Greenback scient- uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the scientists monitoring in West Virginia have found... ...in intelligence. So there you have it. Okay, let's now look at some back-to-earth stuff. Uh, first of all, um, <laughs> this is of no earthly interest probably to anybody, but um, the other night during an interview, I swear to you all, a little mouse came up not more than 18 inches from me and stared at me right in the eye, and I looked at it. We sat there and looked at each other for a little while, and I was so blown away, I didn't know what to do. I started to reach for my iPhone 6 to get a picture, and uh, this mouse I've named Abby Normal was gone. So, last night, I, I, I took the napkin that had the bread and a copious amount of peanut butter on it, and I laid it on the floor. Now, I left the studio empty, with this on the floor. I mean, I even I could smell the peanut butter, right? I came back tonight fully expecting to see it shredded around on the floor, and it hadn't been touched. Not even touched. Uh, so what does that tell you? Not even touched. This means to me this mouse is not in the house. This mouse came somehow from outside to see me probably never saw a human in its little life, and left again, because there is no way, no way that could have been on the floor untouched all night long. So makes it just a little weirder, if you ask me. I hope, frankly, that Abby Normal comes back one of these days for some reason. All right, let's actually look at the, the real news now. Uh, President Obama has said no to the Keystone XL pipeline declaring it would undercut U.S. efforts to clinch a global climate change deal at the center of his environmental legacy. His legacy, huh? So, no pipeline. I don't know how I feel about that. On the one hand, you know, we probably should build it, I think. I think the president's wrong. Um, in a abru- very abrupt turnaround, after, well, a brief secret, ultra-secret consultation with the U.S. and uh, London, England, 
Russia on Friday suspended all passenger flights to Egypt after days of resistance. Apparently what we told them convinced them. They looked at the uh, the black boxes in the plane, and they found absolutely nothing but what they say is the sound of an explosion. So, and plus ISIS cut a new video, again, claiming responsibility for it all. So now what's going to happen? Is Russia going to begin to bomb ISIS as well as the rebels trying to overthrow Assad? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Knowing the Russians, though, well, let's put it this way. In my opinion, frequently when we hit back at somebody, we do it by slapping their wrist. The Russians have a different mentality about hitting back. So if you suddenly see, you know, some significant geography in the Sinai missing soon, you'll know they reacted. This is kind of an interesting story. Fred Dunham, a former employee of EG&G Special Projects who worked as a security guard at Area 51, just over the hill from me here, has been successful in claiming compensation for serious health issues which have affected him as a result of his time there. His case has now been taken up by Donna Hand, a workers' advocate of Tampa who contests the Department of Energy's stance that EG&G is not listed as contractors approved for the compensation program. Hand, of course, disputes that and has documents uh, to support it. So we'll have to see what happens there. In political news, Trump is up a little, Carson down a little, trying to answer questions about his past, and that's kind of it. There's some people who got booted out of the uh, the next debate. Well, booted out is an unfair, violent-sounding term. They weren't burned, uh, booted out. They, they, they were just uh, demoted. And he, even uh, uh, Chris Christie didn't like that were demoted. He said transferred. So it's like when they come to you in school and say, listen, I know you're in the fifth grade, but we're transferring you to the fourth. (laughs) All right, open lines. Anything you want to talk about is fair game. I am going to open up a, a special line, sort of in dedication to the quality of last night's show. My God, it was a good show. We talked about past lives. And it really, really, really was interesting. God, what a show. If, you, if you're if you not a time traveler, oh, you should be. You have access to all our past shows. You can listen to them on your iPhone or your Android device or whatever. You know, we've got an RSS feed, and these are good shows. Last night was just over-the-top good. We talked about past lives. And so that prompts me tonight to open one line at least. For people who think they know what their past life was. Now, you know, the reason, another reason I'm doing it is because he told this story last night about uh, skiing. Remember, putting on the skis and go, going rocketing down the slope, and he knew what he was doing. And he had learned that in a past life, right? For me, I think that I was Asian. I really, really do think that, folks. I was Asian. I like Asian culture. I love Asian food. I eat Asian rice virtually every night. I spend a lot of time in Asia. My daughter is named Asia. I could go on. Asian women, of course. So all the way around, uh, I I think that in a past life, I probably was Asian. I've told my wife that a million times. She's Catholic. I don't know how she is on prior lives. We'll have to talk about that. Anyway, if you think you know what you were in a previous life, the number for you is area code, are you ready? 575-208-7787. Once again, area code 575-208-7787. I will also open the first-time caller line. If you have never called this show, It's area code 775-285-5800. 
I'll try and repeat this. I know I forget. 775-285-5800. I guess I need to have Ross cut some more with these new numbers. And by the way, when I pick up your line, if you are listening to a radio station, please give their call letters. Give them credit. Okay? I also forget to do that all the time. We've got more and more coming on all the time. So give their call letters if you can. And um, something else is nagging at me that I was supposed to do, but I don't recall what it was. So uh, we'll go to break. There, there is something else. What was it? This is what happens when you get old. Night in the Desert doesn't screen calls. We trust you, but remember, the NSA, well, you know. To call the show, please dial 1-952-225-5278. That's 1-952-CALL-ART. Yes, um, all right, so I thought Keith was screwing with me, actually, with a psychic treadmill repairman, really. <laughs> I was sure he was messing with me, but no. <sighs> All right, so uh, I meant to finish up on two things. Uh, it did cross the gray matter, and I got it. Uh, time travelers um, get all kinds of, I don't know, advantages, frankly. You can download any show, RSS, play it any time you want. You can use the wormhole, which I've got right next to me, and read from all the time. Somebody wants me to have a sex- section of the show called Wormhole Corner. I don't know, that's kind of corny where I just sit and read wormhole messages. But maybe I'll have to come up with a, I mean, wormhole corner. I'm not going to call it that. It sounds like out of the 1950s or 40s or something. Uh, if you want to become a time traveler, you go to artbell.com, my website, artbell.com, and then it'll be right there hitting you in the eye. Um, join the time travelers, and you get a lot of stuff for it, including my gratitude. Um, so there was that, and then the talk. I get so many requests for this. I mean, it's just unbelievable. People just writing me emails, phone calls. It, it never ends. Even a few texts from people I know wanting the talk. Okay, here's the talk. <laughs> you can sound better. Better than the people on the phone. They sound pretty good because we've got a superb phone system actually here. And by the way, that's really true. We do. Uh, but you can sound better on Skype. More authoritative, clear, you know, the whole ball of wax. And it's so easy to do. If you've got a portable device of some sort, um, even, frankly, your computer, it doesn't matter. The world has changed. I know you've got one of them. So download Skype. It's free. Skype is free. All the way around. Free. Always free. Of course, Microsoft might change that, but for now it's free. And then you can put in, um, and put us in there. If you're in North America, meaning America and Canada, please enter, you know, as though you would a new contact. There's a little plus sign for it up there. Put in MITD51 for North America. MITD51 for North America. Rest of the world, MITD55. And even if you don't call right away, it's all right. Uh, you'll have it in there in your contacts after you've done that, and you can go back to it and just go and uh, call us for free from anywhere, virtually anywhere in the world. With that in, lo- in mind, uh, let us begin. It's hard to know where to start. Everything's full, as you might imagine. Uh, so let's, I guess, go here. Rochester, New York, I'm guessing. Rochester, New York. Yes. 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 Uh, turn your device off, please. Okay. I can yes, hear it in the background. Sure. Sorry yeah. about that. Can't, can't have that. I mean, once you're on the line, you don't need it. You can hear it on the phone. Absolutely. Okay, good. Thank you. So what's on your mind? Well, um, it's, in re- it's in regards to last night's show. Um, yes. I actually had a question, and I don't know if it's something that you would be 
willing to answer, but <clears throat> I was wondering if you think that past lives influence your future or present life, and if there's signs, like how can you tell if it does? Okay. Well, obviously, I'm not the expert, but I think that's what it's all about, hon, that um, yes. past lives influence your current life. Uh, so the answer is yes and yes. But if you have no idea what your past lives were, are there some kind of signs that you can look for that show? I don't know. <sighs> I find it a little I, I don't either. I mean, if you find yourself drawn to a cat box, then, you know. <laughs> right. Other than that, <laughs> look, I'm not the expert. I'm just the talk show host. Right, right, right. Well, I appreciate the time. Um you you, you you really don't find yourself drawn to cat boxes, right? No, no not okay. at all. Okay. <laughs> Other okay. than I I do like cats, but I'm <laughs> not as one. Yeah. And it's not like when you see one you anyway, go ahead. No, 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 no. <laughs> My husband, he was dying to say hello. If do you mind if I put him on? I don't know. Does he sound pretty good? He does sound pretty good. All right, yeah, put him on. All right, thanks so much. Hi, Art. This is Dan from Rochester, and I'm a very, very excited new caller to the show. I just started on, like, September 18th and have listened to several of your past interviews, and I think you're just an incredible person for <laughs> turning everybody on. Thank you. It's it's kind of an eclectic show. We do, um, and I think people forgot that over the years. I, I do all kinds of things, uh, not just paranormal, not just anything, really, whatever I find cool and interesting. Exactly, and it, it, it piques the listener's curiosity, and it challenges their intellect uh, quite severely in some cases, but in a great way. Everything is very, very positive. Well, and we're very we're very anxious to sign up and, and donate and and be a part of it. it it's fantastic. I well, you don't have to donate. It. You don't have to donate. But if you sign up, it's a hell of a deal. Really, it is. I mean, you get all these past shows, and uh, I think we're coming up on like seventy five shows in this incarnation right now, and it is full of interesting stuff. So you can just like download it and listen to it at your leisure. Which I have, and it's really opened my mind to time travel. And I have a quick question. If I could use a time machine to visit with one of my past life incarnates. Yes. Could I do that? Could I go back and from this time oh. period or timeline that the I prob- Yeah, okay. The problem would be how would you know when you found you? I mean, even if you went well, back to, say, 18, 1700, whatever, how would you know? You would have to search for yourself, I would imagine, or possibly Pretty big job. use... Well, if you had some genealogy traced back to, say, the 1700s, where you knew, in my f- family's case, I had a, a governor in a town of uh, Lyme Regis, England, and yeah, but let's think about know. this for a second, sir. Even okay. if you got back in time and you met up with the person you're talking about right now and you presented them with uh, genetic evidence that you were the same, do you know what they would do with you in 1700? Oh, that I would be a heretic, most likely. Well, you'd be locked away in a rubber room. Genetic I what? Would. Are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you wouldn't. You wouldn't have to. You know, you would have to uh, use your best uh, Downton Abbey, you know, accent <laughs> and and play dumb, as it were. Yes. Yes. Exactly. So, but I, but I do think you could communicate on a level of the time period without exposing yourself. You could be very cautious. Well, I don't. Do know. you think it's it's possible? I mean, I think you could narrow down the region that you were in, and you'd certainly know. Huh. You know this is why I, I, recommend, I, I want you to go out and somehow get a copy of a movie called Eye Origins. I will. Okay. I, will. I, want, I want some feedback after you get it, okay? I will. Very right. good. Well, this is Dan from Rochester, so I will definitely check back with you. And, and it's such a pleasure to, to talk to you. I can't even tell you. Thank you, buddy. Take care. And uh, oops, sorry about that. I thought we were uh, we're done. All right, let's go uh, here. You're on the air. Good evening. 
Hello there. Going once. Hello? Yes, hello. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Sorry. I'm listening on the phone. I didn't hear you. This is Eric from Clemens, North Carolina. Are you a first-time caller, I would take it? Yes, sir, I am. I've been listening to you since way back when we both didn't have any gray hair. Huh. Uh, I want to thank you for getting me through many night shifts in hospital laboratories across the country. Wow. Um, way are, back. <laughs> are you uh, listening on radio or the Internet? I am listening to uh, on through Dark Matter on the uh, TuneIn radio app. Okay. And I just wanted to say hi to my buddies out there at the Midnight Fans Forum. I'm sure they're all like, oh, that's him, that's him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys, that's him. <laughs> anyway, so I'm glad you're back. Oh, my God, can't say. I, of course, that's probably the millionth time you've heard that. Um, I don't know if this counts really as a past life, but... I had a dream once, and it was one. If you have one of those dreams where you smell the smells, you feel the textures, it's almost like you've stepped into, uh, like on a stage. It, it was like so realistic. I felt like I was actually there. It wasn't so much a dream state, but like I was well, really okay, there. Okay, okay. Was this dream? Did the dream involve you? Yeah, it was from my point of view. It wasn't like I was looking at a character. It was like I was standing flat-footed on this, it's like in a Grecian, you know, Mediterranean-type stonework pier. Wow. You know, like there was a boathouse to my, the best thing I can do to describe it is a boathouse with columns, you know, made of stone. I looked up from that, and there's this, wall of water and the next thing I know I'm being obliterated by the the rubble that's in the water and it's wow. kind of an alar yeah it was kind of an alarming thing but it was so realistic perhaps your death in a uh, previous life huh I'm wondering it like I said it it, it was I didn't uh, Okay, let me note something here, sir. Thank you so very much for the call, and let me let me note something quickly, and that is, when we dream, don't we always dream about ourselves? In other words, have any of you ever had a dream that in, in which you were completely somebody else? That would be weird, right? Another creature, another person. The dream was not, you were nowhere in the dream whatsoever. I mean, I'm always in my dreams, I think. I'm, I'm trying to think back, but I, I can't, cannot recall a time I've had a dream that I wasn't part of it. It was part of my past or something like that. And I've never been back in the 17 or 1800s either. Um, hello there. On uh, a cell phone somewhere, you're on the air. Hello? Yes, hello. This is Julie in Colorado. Julie in Colorado. Hi, Julie. Yeah. Hey, Art. So glad you're back on the air. Thank you. It I is... Uh, I listen to you. It's not the same when I'm not on the air. I don't know why. It's like I was made to do this, I guess, or did it in a past life. You were made to do it. <laughs> well, I have to tell you this. I have to tell you, I've been trying to call in for weeks that I saw a structure. You mean a mega structure? I saw the mega structure in 2007. I was um uh I had to go open a a business that I used to run and it was at 3 in the morning. Drove to the business that I ran and let an employee in and then I drove back home. You're not talking about the mega structure that we've been talking about, are you? Yes, yes. How could you have seen that? I mean, even with the best... I, I've, yes. I saw it. I saw it because I called my husband, and this was about 3.30 in the morning, and I said, I'm looking at a UFO. I, and I, so I, you didn't like shout, honey, honey, a mega structure, come quick. No, I didn't. I didn't know how to describe it. I didn't know how to describe <laughs> it, and... And it and I closed my eyes really tight and opened them again and I'm just to make sure that I wasn't just all right. Hold on, uh, we've we've got a, we've got a break. We've got a break. Hold on. 
What a tale my thoughts could tell Just like an old time movie About a ghost from a wishing well In a castle dark Or a fortress strong The clock strikes twelve And Midnight in the Desert is pounding packets your way on the Dark Matter Digital Network. To call the show, please direct your finger digits to dial 1-952-225-5278. That's 1-952-CALL-ART. Who sings with that much enthusiasm? Boy, is that something, that song. Welcome, everybody. It's Open Lines. Anything goes. Anything you want to talk about is fair game. National number 952-225-5278. Uh, the other numbers of interest, Past Lives line at area code 575-208-7787. That's 575-208-7787. I have to have Ross do this. First time callers at area code 775-285-5800. That's 775-285-5800. And the young lady who was on the air with me uh, prior to the break is now back. Where were we? Hi, Art. Hi. I was telling you about the mega structure oh, yes, yes. I saw in 2008. Well, okay. But, I mean, you were on Earth, right? I was on Earth. Yes, yes. and you were looking in the sky, I presume, and you said sort of UFO, right? Yes, yes. Well, it was unidentified. It doesn't look like any UFO that you see, you know, you see pictures of. Now, this was like a structure. Is it? And it yeah, so it was like a UFM, unidentified flying yeah. megastructure. Yes, yes. And I, I didn't know how to describe it until the last couple of weeks when you started talking about this megastructure. Gotcha. And I said to my husband, I said, that's it. That's, that's what I saw. Because huh. I could draw a picture of it, but I could never... Explain it to anyone. And, okay, okay you know, then I have an assignment for you. Yes. Draw a picture of it and send it to me. Send I it. will. Okay, send it to um, KNY. Well, let's see. How do I want to do this? Uh, Art Bell at KNYE. Can you do that? KNYE? Yes. yes uh, I people can. get it all messed up. They get dyslexic with it. It's K. N Y E. I don't know why people want to do it the other way. I won't even say it, or it will stick. But send me that photograph. I'd love to see it. I w- well, it'll be me drawing it. I will draw it and send it to you. And it was huge. And I just wanted to let you know that somebody has seen it. All right. Um, I will just take your word on that. I have no way of knowing if you saw the mega structure or a mega structure, actually. Uh, let's go here uh, to our first time caller line, actually. Hello. Hello. Yes, hi. Oh, hey, Mr. Bell. Boy, this is an honor. Hey, I just wanted to tell you, I've been listening to you for years, and uh, this is calling from KCAA, which is near Idlewild, California. That's the way to do it. Yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah, put in a good plug. Anyhow, uh, I only get you for an hour on this, and then I... Switch over to uh, your, your your antithesis, and that's George Norrie, who actually bashed you last night about the whole uh, no. megastructure thing. No, yeah, yeah. So he, no, yeah, he, he, just, he bashed me. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, well, I, no, wait, no, wait, wait, but don't just leave it at that. Hold it, hold it, hold it. What did yeah. he? What did he say? Oh well, well. This is after he was justifying that the Earth produces oil abiotically. I mean, <laughs> the guy's out of his mind. He's not, but, but anyhow, he's, he, he was saying that, you know, some people exaggerate what they find or they exaggerate the finds of scientists. Mm. Which I don't think you were doing it at all. I mean, you know, take it for what it's worth. But the reason I call is I wonder, I, I listened to you 20 years ago, do you ever feel like you were set up by Richard Hoagland? And I'll just go off the phone. Thank you so much, Art. <laughs> um, set up? Uh, no, not really. I don't think I was set up at all. Uh, the only the you know, 
I looked at rocks with Richard for years. Uh, the one he got me with was the uh, the thing that a lot of other people, by the way, have found and said, look, this is artificial. There's no question about it. Maybe it came from our space program. Maybe not, but there was a pipe sticking out of it. Uh, what he called uh, number nine, I believe, right? So... And, and, you know, as far as uh, my making a big deal out of this story, uh, it is a big deal. Now, nobody's saying that it's aliens. Well, actually, uh, Jason Wright mentioned that. I've not said that. I've said um, it could be. And uh, I don't know why he bashed me, actually, for saying that, because it, it, it would be the biggest story of our lifetimes, Absolutely no question about it if it turned out to be anything at all. All the indications are, and I've had leaks from NASA, as you know, leaks from uh, scientists trying to puzzle it out. Nobody has knocked it down yet. So it remains an item of intense interest. And so if he wants to bash me for that, who cares? That's just, you know, well, there's a word. I, I, I won't use it. Uh, hello, undead, uh, I believe it's undead quake guy. That's your name, right? Uh, hello there, Art. Undead quake guy. How did yes, you come me. up with a name like that? Uh, well, it's a bit of a moniker that the village up here in Canada gave me, uh, to be honest. I'm extremely talented at an old game called Quake, ah. uh, on the PC. Uh -huh. And, uh, well, it was Halloween, and so I decided to change it to undead. Frankly, I've just been asleep for too long and uh, forgot to change it. Mm -hmm. Well, um, it, it makes you distinctive, that's for sure. My uh, daughter was watching Pixels earlier, and I was watching guys play Donkey Kong. Ah, uh, yes, a classic art, an absolute classic. <laughs> yes. I was calling in uh, for two quick things. I uh, wanted to have a little bit of discussion about the megastructure yes. and uh, how it could have been built. But first I want to, to give you an update about my cow. You're uh, I called in a, a week or two ago when you, you had uh, the witch on. Um, okay. You asked me to call you back for a bit of an update on uh, the cure that she gave me for the cow. And I want to let you know she should not be the local witch because I fed my cow exactly oh, what she told me to, uh -oh. which was milk and, and uh, honey. And, what uh, and of course, she was the only cow in the village, so I gave her her milk and honey and a week later, she passed away, and unfortunately, I won't be able to marry my wife now, because that was the dowry. There's tragedy, and then there's this call. I mean, my God, that's awful. It just capped right on the barnyard floor. So that, <laughs> that witch, I, I just don't know. I, I really think you should give her a pass. But uh, on to something a little more extraterrestrial. Yes. Uh, allow me, if you would, a moment of Socratic dialogue. Uh, if they're going to be creating a Dyson Sphere... That would require a massive amount of materials, would it not? Ah, oh, you would. And in order to harness such material, they would most likely need to be gathering minerals from at least all over their solar system, at the least, correct? Uh, at the least. However, what if, instead of requiring going around gathering all of these resources, they had something what is called a universal constructor? Have you heard of this art? Well... Is it, is it from Star Trek? Universal Constructor is not from Star Trek, no, is right, it from okay. Star Wars? Unfortunately, right. it's actually a concept that uh, goes back several decades in science. Sort of the philosopher's stone of science, if you will, being able to put materials into this machine, mm -hmm. and then it rewrites the code at the subatomic level, moves the particles around, and, and changes it into the particle of, of what you need for instance, oh. lead to gold or silicon yeah. to petroleum. That's kind of like Star Trek, in a way. I was just wondering if you've had any guests or any scientists or, or anything of the sort that might have brought it up, because I do believe it's a fascinating topic, and it might be the only way that we as mankind manage to reach out past the solar system, because we're having a rough time managing our own resources as it is. We could certainly use a un universal constructor. There's no question about it. Um, but all the scientists that I was aware of that had anything to do with that project came to untimely ends. 
I wouldn't be surprised at all, Art. Well, anyway, thank you very much for allowing me on. I just want to give you an update about the cow. Hopefully, uh, her family can find some other sort of dowry, or uh, this cow farmer is just going to become a normal farmer. All Have right. yourself a good night. Get off my line. Thank you. Uh, let's go here to, uh, I believe, Washington, and say you're on the air. Hello, Art. Hi. Hello. Hi. Art, um, I wanted to let you know uh, we've had problems in our area where we have these little little uh, local mice. They're kind of the little forest mice. Yes. And they will get into the engine of your car, and they love to eat the wiring. It's happened to and, me. Um, yeah, and so and they love when they get in uh, to let a house. Me, let me tell you how, how bad. Let me tell you how bad it was. We had a mouse that got in the heater, you know, the heater part of the car yeah, and yeah. the fan part, and we had yeah. we had little mouse pieces coming out. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, it was awful. <laughs> it was absolutely awful. And, and little mouse pieces and fur kept coming out for a long, long time. Oh, it's a tragedy. Well, mine last year, it got in my, one of them got in my van outside and, uh, it started, it started, the engine light came on and I called my mechanic and he went into it. He's, he's a really good mechanic. And $1,200 later, he told me, uh, he, he immediately came up with photos and everything of what they had done. And we got the parts and everything, put everything together. But he said, there's so much wiring that they've shooting through. And he showed me all this, all these photos he'd taken in there and, and I could actually see down in there. Well, now I'm not worried. Do you know why? Yeah, I've got a lot of wiring here, of course. But I left the peanut butter and bread on the floor last night, didn't touch it. This, to me, means that mouse is not in this house. Well, you know what they love? Because I, I had some, some help. I was donating at the wildlife shelter over here, and they have a lot of, they hate to kill animals, and they had a lot of rodents coming in at night and even eating some of the birds that were in the in the cages uh, that they were trying oh, to rehab. So, yes. Yeah, it was tragic. So... So what they did, they were trying everything to try to trap, you know, put them in, in rat traps. And and they couldn't bait. They tried peanut butter, everything. And they finally used Cheetos. And the things, every you'd even hear them snapping during the day. You know, the, they love Cheetos. For some Cheetos, reason. huh? Cheetos, that's the best. Well, I am convinced. Okay, I get it. But I thank you very much. I'm, I am convinced. My mouse, Abby Normal is not in the house. There is no way that a mouse could not smell peanut butter probably five rooms away. So that little guy, little gal, I do believe, came to me, wanted to see me, wanted to see a human, saw me, and left. It can That's the only explanation, right? Because... How could she not have eaten the peanut butter overnight? Simple as that. Let's go to our first-time caller line. How about there? Hello. You're on the air. Going once? Mark, this yes. Is John, this is, yes, this is Jonathan. I really enjoyed a very interesting interview with the uh, gentleman that does the past life yes. regressions yesterday. Very fascinating. I want to suggest two uh, alternate possibilities of how to interpret what people are experiencing there. First of all, if there are beings, whether good or malevolent, who are as much bigger than us as we are than bacteria, they could, if they wanted to, give us the impression that we are experiencing a past life regression. They could they could mess with our minds just like we we do with experimenting with some um, bacteria and I suppose you know small small creatures of that sort so so if they had an agenda that involved confusing us about the afterlife that that is a possibility that I don't see how we could rule out but the, the uh, second one that I, that occurred to me was that when you have a love relationship when you really empathize with someone whether can it's I ask you a quick question what do, what are you talking on anyway? Oh, I'm, I'm talking on a uh, uh, mobile headset. Is it too? Is it hard to hear? It, it's awful, actually. Is it? You mean like Bluetooth? Yeah, yeah. All right. I'm going to demonstrate this for everybody's good. What I want you to do 
Stay on the line, disconnect the Bluetooth, and talk directly into the phone instead. Can okay, you, you got it. You got it. All you right, got it. I'll wait. Let me disconnect. It won't take long. All right, All right. good. Okay. I'll, I'll I wait. Am. I want you to... Here I am. I'm on the phone directly. Now. That, oh, that sounds so much better. So much okay. better. Don't ever use well, Bluetooth and call me. Well, That's what, what Bluetooth have. does to a phone, folks. Um, all right, back to matters of love. Okay, that's yeah, that's a good that's a good learning uh, for me. Yeah, if if you empathize with someone, uh, whether it's the, the empathy of friendship or romantic love, some, especially when you're a child, sometimes the distinctions between your ego, who you are, and who they are, can be um, dissolved. You know, especially if if the love is really strong, you really identify with that person. So. Mm-hmm. Why couldn't it be possible that, um, you, you know, whether psychically or through remote viewing that people are doing, that that these people are empathizing with a person in the past, or like you said, there were some people who were parallel, who were living at the same time as them, that you're deeply empathizing with, but it doesn't necessarily follow from that that you are that person. See well, I mean? yes, I do. Um, interesting. You know, the program last night really brought all kinds of questions to my mind. We're not done with that man by a long, long shot. I mean, there are so, so many questions. Skype brings somebody named Action. Hello, this is Ross in St. Louis, Missouri. Ross, hello. How are you doing? Uh, hey, uh, fine. I had a few things for you. Sorry. All right, that's all right. First time Skype. Just... Right. User, so I'm having a hard here. Uh oh, now you're breaking up. You're okay. You're breaking. Is this any better? A little bit better. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Well, uh, I had a couple past lives for you that I thought that uh, I'd like to hear about. With this kind of I connection, have... I'll take one past life. Okay, that's fine. Um, just real quickly, then uh, I meditated many nights in a row about trying to get to a past life. So right before I'd fall asleep in that, that kind of gray area, I would listen to myself say over and over again what was past life right. that I needed to know about. Okay. And what it came out was nothing important. I was a monk on a road, and it, we were being invaded, and I stabbed. I would I, say that's, that's pretty serious, actually. Well, I mean... Death itself may be serious, but the role, you know, I wasn't some pharaoh or a... No, 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 uh, I've know, got it. You were a monk. But, uh, yes, thank you very much. Look, that's pretty interesting stuff, right? If you were a monk, I say, interesting. Very, very interesting, actually. At least you know more than I do. I, I just sort of generally know I was Asian. And I'm not even sure that I, I know that. It could be... But yeah, it does seem likely, actually. Uh, you're on the air. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello. Art. Art, indeed. Hey, um, I started listening to you. Well, actually, watching you in 2000 with your show with uh, Ramona on TV here in Peru. I, and I, I no, wait, wait, wait. Ramona and I never, ever did a show here in Peru. So yeah. I, I appreciate. The fact that you you like the show. Uh, there is a couple that does a show uh, or did a show some years ago. I don't know if they still do, but that wasn't me. Oh, well, I'm sorry I'm mistaken for that. Sorry. I lost my ass in 2003, so I exponentially enjoyed radio from that point on. But uh, And I am so glad that you're back on. And every kudo you get, you fully deserve. But the other thing, I, I, may I recommend a book? Yes. I don't read, of course, because I'm blind, but I listen to them about five a week for about 12 years now. Okay, real quick, because we're out of break. What's the name? Uh, Death in the Pines by Tom Hartman. Death in the Pines. Sound painful. All right, we've got a break here. I appreciate the call. Open lines. I'm waiting for someone to ask. 
Sweeps across America. You found an oasis for the mind. To call Midnight in the Desert, please dial 1 952 Call Art. That's 1 952 225 5278. You know, on Fridays I get to play around a little more with bumper music, and I do. I play a little. Everything, actually. Uh, Fridays are open lines, and that's exactly what we're in the middle of right now. So if you are just joining us, Here's the deal. Anything goes. All right? Uh, we've got a national line of area code 952-225-5278. You can call that one. You can call the... Um, oh, we do have a special past lives line. That would be area code 575-208-7787. 575-208-7787. And first... Time callers to the program, area code 775-285-5800. And the talk. No, I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> Everybody just cringed, right? Hello there. You're on the air from, uh, well, on our special line, actually. Hello. Yes, me? Yes, you. Ah, well, what I figured was back in... Uh... Well, 66, 67, drove with my parents uh, back to Maryland. We took the Deep South route. We were going to family reunion in Maryland. And uh, starting in Mississippi, Alabama, up in through the Carolinas, we would go through towns in little, you know, small towns. Yeah. We were taking, taking a lot of the, you know, the blue highways. Because my dad liked to do that. Are you like chewing gum? Oh, sorry, it's gone. <laughs> uh, like a fifth grade school I'm, teacher. I'm but... seriously chewing my nicotine gum. And I see. Smoking. All right. Anyway, uh, we'd go into these little towns. I'd know exactly what was going to be there before we, you know, hit the main street. Deja vu constantly. In, in several towns. Yes. And I thought about that. A long time, and uh, it was all, it wasn't, you know, terribly long ago. It was uh, mostly 20s and 30s, pre, uh, pre-depression. pre I said, now, what would get me all over the South and moving like that all the time and uh, being real familiar with all this? And I, well, a traveling salesman. So you think you were a traveling salesman in the South? Well, that's the only way I could explain it. Any idea what you were selling? No idea at all. It's just all these little towns. Going Back then, on. it could have been like encyclopedias. Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah, but I, I just figured that the more I thought about it, the more I thought, well, what would get me around? And then I happened to be watching, uh, for about the third time, I was watching... Uh, 76 trombones. I was watching all these people on the train. They're salesmen, and they travel all over these places. They yeah. do it on a regular basis. They do, yeah. Yeah, Maybe that's what I was doing. I was born in 51, uh-huh. and uh, my dad, now I never took the sales. I was terrible at sales all my life. So I you know, tried it two or three times, and mm-hmm. it didn't go, so I didn't. Right. My dad was a salesman, and he knew all the little towns in central and north east and northwest, northeast Texas and east Texas, and uh, he just enjoyed the heck out of it. And he's quite successful with it. Too. And uh, you're not violating Rule Three, are you? What's Rule Three? A uh, Rule Three is a two drink minimum. I haven't drunk anything, not with the medications I take. <laughs> 
I see. Okay, it's medications. Sorry. Um, okay, well, I get it. So you were a traveling salesperson uh, back in, uh, well, who knows when. Remember the days they used to knock on the door? Knowledge for your children, ma'am. I remember those days. Now, encyclop- encyclopedia salespeople are no more. I don't think they have them anymore. The Internet has taken that all away. Okay. Gosh, so many people calling at once. Um, you're on the air. Good uh, evening, morning, whatever. Hey, Yard. How are you? Uh, I'm quite well. Two drink minimum. i got to start drinking. <laughs> I, every time I say it, I say it one way or the other. People know what I'm talking about, but twist it on uh-huh. purpose. So now I'm saying it either way. Do you want to catch them, kill them, or feed them? Uh, oh, I, I don't care. I'm, I'm, no, I'm not my brother's keeper in this case. Let him have uh, a Try a piece of bacon, fried ham. Oh, you're talking about the mouse? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, look, if bread with uh, copious amounts of peanut butter on it will not bring a mouse to nibble, it can't be done. This mouse obviously what? came from outside and returned to the outside. The peanut butter that they're selling today, they don't like it anymore. They're, oh, they're come it. on. I'm telling you. This is good yeah, skippy stuff, smooth. I, that's the same stuff I got. Yeah. And I'll tell you, every time I use it, they pass it by. Oh, sure. Mistake, You're I telling me mistake. mice don't like peanut butter anymore. Come on. I don't know. It's something in the mix that they're using today. I'm telling you. Well, now you're scaring me. I mean, if a mouse won't go for peanut butter, and you're telling me there's something in there, I don't buy that. I eat a lot of Skippy. I'm okay. Put it, put out a piece of bacon or a piece of fried ham or or the last one that. Uh, I'm not. You know, I'm not trying to throw the last dinner for Abby Normal here. I was just trying to see if Abby Normal really was here, and I maintain that if he, if if Abby Normal would not go for the peanut butter, Abby Normal's gone. I bet you put out a piece of meat, you'll find that it's gone in the morning. All right, all right. Well, I'm I'm also not trying to attract Bigfoot, so I'm done. I'm done as much as I can. Let me go overseas to uh, Mark. Uh, I yeah. think in uh, yeah. Hi Art. Hello. Hi Art. The sun. Is you sound like here. you're at the bottom of a barrel, Mark. Really? Uh, now you sound a little different. What are you doing? Um, I'm I'm sitting here with my iPad, and I just changed the volume control. Maybe that makes it better. Okay, here's the deal, Mark. Find where the microphone is. Okay. Is that better? It is better. Okay. Um, a couple of things. You just gave a clue to me why the mouse didn't come. You said you're using Skippy Smooth peanut butter. Yeah. What's the matter it's with that? a sophisticated mouse art. He wants chunky. Yeah. <laughs> Leave me alone. Okay, then I have something else for you. Good. What's that? There was an emergency landing. I don't know if this was picked up in the U.S. press. An emergency landing of a Singapore Airlines freight plane this week carrying 1,268 live go- goats from Singapore to Malaysia. I bet the that reason, was... That must the been, reason... The, oh, go ahead. Must have been some cleanup. The reason the plane had to make an emergency landing is that the methane gas alarms went off in the plane. <laughs> That's which, why which, I said it must have been messy. You know, which I'm, leads to the question, Art, yes. who cut the goat cheese? <laughs> oh, Mark, go away. <sighs> Let's go uh, here to um, New Jersey, I think. Hello. Uh, good uh, good morning, Art. Uh, it's Ed from New Jersey. How are you tonight, sir? I'm okay. I um, wanted to touch on a few things with you. Um, yeah. One great dead air show last Friday night. For it was Halloween. a lot of fun. Top notch. I, I had called in and told you the story about the coffin um, being found in the backyard with a small child. Oh, yes. But look, um, anyway, a couple things. Uh, one, when you had um, Bill Burns and the other gentleman on uh, the same week, Yes. And they were talking about the uh, Amityville case. Yes. Has anyone ever reached out to the children to ask them if they were told to lie about this or they went along okay, with Okay, here's the deal. Um, I'm going to answer your question, all right? Uh, we're in touch with Christopher. 
And that's all I'm going to say right now. I repeat, we're in touch with Christopher. Now, I don't know whether he wants to come on the air. I don't know whether he wants to tell his story. But my producer is indeed in touch with Christopher Lutz. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but that was, uh, that was quite a show, wasn't it? Let's go to Skype and Tony. Hi, Tony. Hey, how you doing, Art? I'm doing okay. Good. Um, I wanted to tell you how, uh, learning about my past life has affected my entire life. Okay. You still there? Okay. I am. Uh, uh, when I, w- I spent a lot of time in the Navy when I was quite young. And uh, I was on the flight deck of an aircraft carrier. I used to work there. And when we didn't have flight ops, <clears throat> I would go up and go to sleep in these uh, nets that hung over the side that would catch you if you uh, happen to fall off or get blown off. And I used to go there when there was no flight ops, of course, and uh, jump into them and go to sleep. Okay. And it would be, you know, in the middle of the ocean, and it was unbelievable. The sleep was very, very heavy. And I would have some truly amazing dreams. And uh, I used to dream over and over again about being up in a balcony, in, in a building on the second floor, <clears throat> in the balcony, painting a portrait of a woman. And obviously it was, uh, you know, at one of the... Uh, old country uh, town, small village. And it would wake me up. It was so strong. And what would happen would I'd be looking out onto the uh, town square. Obviously, the building was right on the town square, and there was a fountain in the middle. And a light would start. It would start small, and then it would get real, real bright till it blinded me. And I was painting at the time a portrait of a woman. Okay, we we have and, limited uh, time here, so let's rush to and the. And then I, will, I'm sorry. Rush to the conclusion, if we can. Okay, I'm sorry. And what and what happened there is I actually made it. Uh, you know, of course, we went to a lot of ports overseas, and I happened to come across a little village in Spain. And in that village, uh, as I was walking through it with one of my uh, shipmates, uh, we, we seen a fountain in the middle of the. Of the uh, Square, and I recognized it, and that was it. That was the that was, I that was up, and it was the building. Yeah, and I, and I knew that I was there at one time. Well, the way it affected me the rest of my life is, uh, I realized at that point in time, uh, I still had a few, few, few more years left in the Navy. I realized at a point in time that, you know, my artistic talents that I had when I was younger, I, I needed to develop, and I did. And I spent my life doing artwork, actually military artwork. And, uh, it just was amazing. Now what actually happened is after we did see the light go, after, I'm sorry, after I did see the fountain where a light went off, I went into the backyard of the building and there was another fountain back there made out of a seashell. And I seen that in my dream originally. I, did, I wanted to cut the dream a little short for time. Okay. And so I was convinced. That okay, so that that was like the second piece of proof you needed to decide you had indeed uh, been there at a prior time. Yeah, okay, I get it. Um, I'm not sure how I would handle that either. If you saw something absolutely that you had dreamt about or that uh, was from a prior life, never had been to that location, geographic location before, ever, 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 uh, and yet, there it was. So, do you think this proves reincarnation? It's an interesting question. I've got a lot of people who have put messages, speaking of, uh, well, Roger, for example. Art, past lives, bunk. Hebrews 9, 2, 7, 2, 7, it's appointed unto men once to die. But after this, excuse me, after this, the judgment. And that would be the view of many, many people. It offends their religious sensibilities, right? So think about that a little bit. 
if reincarnation were real, well, it can't be, right? Not according to the Bible. We die but once. Then we get judged. And it has to be that way. So this kind of talk is from a heretic? <laughs> on my first time caller line, you are on the air. Harpel. Yes, sir. How you doing? Great. How about you? Good. This is Rich from New Jersey. Okay. Uh, I wanted to ask you, um, that alien megastructure thing that's going on, do you think that could possibly be us from the future trying to signal us now? Well, as or... I mentioned earlier, the, you know, the scientists um, at, at Greenback... Nothing is, right? Uh, uh, you you fuzzed out for me like through your whole comment, which sucked. (laughs) (laughs) I was waiting for somebody to bring that up. You fuzzed out on me, but uh, I'm a time traveler, so I'll check back with you. But (laughs) all right, thank you. It's a a pleasure. (laughs) Yeah, thank you. Finally. Waiting for somebody to mention that. <laughs> Actually, there is no new news. <laughs> but I thought I would do that, and surely there would be somebody that would come along in the first hour and call me on that. But no, nobody did. I couldn't believe it. Maybe that's a lack of interest, or maybe it's religious objection, or maybe they just don't want to hear about it. I can't quite figure it out, the way people are reacting, or is it a non-reaction, to this story. Now, there's no particular <laughs> news tonight, but I thought I'd give that a try and and see if it piqued anybody's interest, and it took over an hour for anybody to come along. Come on, folks. Give me a break here. Uh, Celeb, is that right? Caleb? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is Caleb. And, Caleb. Uh... All right, Caleb. I'm calling you from Silicon, Alabama. Uh, I've talked to you over the years, uh, probably this is probably about my fifth time since, uh, 1999. And that's what brings me to my call tonight. My first time listening to you was when you interviewed Chris Carter back in late 99. And, uh, I've heard you mention it several times about the Exiles coming back. That's one of my favorite shows. And I know that you were involved with the sister show, Millennium. Uh, I was just calling to ask you if have you have have you thought about having him uh, Chris Carter back on the show or back on, on on the new show for the first time I should say. Um, <laughs> I, I all right. I'm not supposed to talk about this, but yeah, I'm going to have him on. He's scheduled. How about that? That's beautiful. I shouldn't That's... have given that away, but you pried <laughs> it out of me. I wanted to ask you another thing. Lance Hendrickson, I know you had him on the show a long time ago around. Worked with him. Oh, yeah, I remember on Millennium. Yeah, yeah that's one of my favorite shows, and I've, I've had my fingers crossed that they're going to bring that character back into the new X-Files series, but I don't think <laughs> they're going to. But uh, that would be something that I would dream of. But anyway, uh, I just wanted to call you and ask you that. And uh, I, I hate TV. I hate doing TV. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm really serious. Uh, it's wild. It's fast. It's hurried. It's constantly redone. It's tough. I'm glad I'm in radio. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're back on the air, and that's really all I wanted to bring up, and uh, I'm glad to hear uh, what <laughs> the secret that you just divulged. <laughs> you mean the one you yanked out of me? Okay, well, I'm probably going to get in trouble for that. But how could I not admit it when he brought it up? I can hear my producer now going, oh. (laughs) Uh, Up to Canada, I believe. Hello. Hello. Yes, hello. Hi, this is David from Nanaimo, British Columbia, Canada. Glad to have you. Art, I have a really interesting story about my mom and dad that I've been wanting to tell you for a few years now. Go right ahead. Um, my mom and dad were born in the 20s. They were both uh, in World War II. My dad from Canada brought my mom over from England. She was a war bride. Right. Um, 
back in 2006, my dad was in his 80s and he was suffering with severe dementia. It was really, really bad, and every once in a while he'd have some lucid moments. It was really tough to communicate with him, but every once in a while for about five, ten minutes he'd kind of come back and he'd, he'd know who he was and where he was and who you were. Sure. And um, during one of his lucid moments he told me that, David, I've been unplugged. And they've, they've called me back to the mothership, the mothership, and I thought, oh, my goodness, what's going on with my dad? But anyways, um, jump back to the 40s when my mom and dad were married, bringing my mom over from England um, from World War II. My, my dad made my mom, or my, pardon me, my dad made my mom's dad a promise that he would never, never, ever, ever leave her no matter what. Um, he says, you're taking my daughter away all the way overseas, and he knew he'd only see his daughter maybe once or twice again in his life, so please don't ever, ever leave her. So right. my, my dad swore he would never leave him, and, and you know what? They had a real rocky marriage. They had one of the rockiest marriages you could ever have, but she, he never did go. Anyways, you go back for, you go forward to 2007. This is when um, they were both in a nursing home, and my dad was slumped over and um, getting fed by the nurses in the nursing home, and all of a sudden he stopped breathing and he went blue and the carry called uh, the nurse over and um turned out that my uh, they took his heartbeat and or his his pulse and his heart had stopped beating so they wheeled him back to his room and he sat in his chair I'm thinking for a few minutes maybe 5 minutes and then the head nurse came over checked his vitals and still it was exactly the same way um they put him back up on the bed and sure as hell sure pardon me sorry sure as hell he uh, he came to all of a sudden, wow. and all of a sudden he was breathing again. And um, it was about a month later after that. My okay, there's only one another. part of this that I don't get. Yeah. Why would they sit him in a chair, as you mentioned, and not begin life resuscitation type things? Oh, I can tell you that. He was in the chair, and they put him in, into the bed, and that's when he start. That's when he'd come to. Okay. Um, he had a do not resuscitate order. That oh, okay, one. okay. That answers it. Thank you. Yeah. So, anyways, it was about a month after that. He had another lucid moment with my mom, and my mom said, "John, look at you. You're all slumped over all the time. You're never able to communicate. How the heck are you able to do this? I mean, a month ago you, you passed away, John, and now you're back to me." And, and he looked at my mom, and he said. I know, I was sent back for you. <laughs> and wow. I, about a month after that, my mom started getting sick, and it was about six months after that my mom had died, and uh, he died a few months after that. But uh, So he actually he actually outlived her? He outlived her by about three months. Wow, so it was his job to come back, collect her, and, uh, and then go on himself. That's incredible. Um, all right, thank you. Thank you very much for the call. Huh. That's actually quite a story, isn't it? It's my job to come back for you. Wow, think about that one. Um, okay, let's go where? Let's go to Lloyd. Lloyd, uh, you're on the air on Skype. Uh, hi, Ars. Hi. Uh, let me turn off my radio. Oh, yes, please. Thank you. So he's actually listening to the radio. That should be interesting. Okay. I have a question about uh, last night's show. All right. I mean, before you go into that, sir, what station are you listening to? I'm listening on the app for uh, Dark Radio, uh, the radio okay. app. All right. So you're actually on the Internet. Yes, on the Internet. Okay. All right. Very good. Go ahead. Uh, I was wondering uh, concerning reincarnation, and uh, what about uh, do-over suicide, if things are going well in your life uh having uh, personal problems or illness or whatever, if you believed in reincarnation, why wouldn't you just uh, do a do-over and end it? Well, there's an easy answer to that, because you can't be sure. Well, that's true. You sure can't. <laughs> so... I mean, I just you... wondered if that had been brought up by anybody, you know, because if you if you actually believed in reincarnation... I think that'd be a very viable option if things weren't going well. Well, certainly it'd be a test of faith, yes. Yeah, it sure would. Well, it's nice talking to you. Uh, first time I've ever called. Um, okay, well, thank you, and please call again. Okay. Yes, I, I would call that a test of faith. Not not the right kind, but definitely a test of faith. 
Oh, I believe in reincarnation. Really? Well, under those circumstances, what are you doing here? You should be offing yourself, right, and trying to find out if it's a, a real or not and have your do-over. Why don't people do it? Well, because you can't quite always be sure. All right, let's go to uh, Gloucester, I believe it is. Uh, where is that, Vermont? Oh, it's in uh, Virginia, Art. Virginia, I'm sorry. All I can see on the phone is V. <laughs> well, actually, I drive a truck. Um, I'd like to thank... Kern in Bakersfield, California, 1180, for carrying your show. Well, and yes, thank you, Kern. It's such a gift for so many people to be back on the air. Thank you so much. Sure. And uh, I'd just like to say, back in 2000, in December of 2000, I was putting up some Christmas lights at my home, and uh, I got a pretty good electrical shock. And within a day, I don't know how this happened, within a day I was learning how to erase chemtrails with mirrors and an infrared light. Erase chemtrails. Later, yeah, I found out how to erase chemtrails seriously, and uh, the, I, I had some some ill effects from the uh, the shock. And I found out later um, there was a group called the Survivors of Electrical Shock and Lightning Strike. Okay. We just really I can't get past the erasing chemtrails part. So if you don't mind, before we go on, how do you erase a chemtrail? Well, what I did, I had two large mirrors. Yes. Uh, this came came to me on two six foot tall mirrors that were four feet wide. Yes. And I kind of marked I'd mark the sun and then I'd angle the light from the sun at the tail of the chemtrail, which erased it like if you're erasing something with a pencil eraser. And uh, that it is worked pretty, a day pretty cool. It was. It was. A day later a navy uh, biplane buzzed the house about huh. three hundred feet over my house. Yeah, how could you uh, be sure? Might I ask, please? How are you sure that you're on the chemtrail, that you've got the mirrors position properly so that your beam is hitting the chemtrail? All I can say is, like, there was a gift given to me. Like, it was, like, working art or something. It was, like, making art. Okay. You know, like, artwork, like I was doing. Is, and uh, I also used it at night. I used an infrared light, which I'm really surprised I didn't get in trouble. I never pointed it directly at any planes or anything like that, and I would highly suggest no one doing this. No doubt. It was mainly during the, day, during the daytime, and it was on the coast of California. There was an intense intense sun in the December of 2000, and uh, among other things, uh, I did that, and I uh, learned about remote neural monitoring and the microwave auditory effect, and I'd just like to point out to your guests, I don't you know, anybody, anybody ever, uh, like you're listening to the radio, and then you just so happen to hear maybe what you're thinking about on the radio or something, or... Right. You're thinking, you know, kind of, I definitely do not believe in coincidences anymore. And I'd just like to, uh, that's the main reason why I called why people should check out uh, remote neural monitoring and the microwave auditory effect. And uh, and I learned so many things. Art. And, you know, my neighbors probably thought I was nuts. I was giving, you know, this... this, uh, elect, this Probably some software. people listening right now may be thinking that. Listen, I've got to run. I've got to break. But I, I do appreciate your call. You're racing chemtrails out there with mirrors are racing chemtrails. Some might say... Midnight in the Desert. To call the show, if you're east of midnight, call 1-952-CALL-ART. If you're west of midnight, call 1-952-225-5278. Messing with you folks a little bit. Yes, the white noise, that was me messing with you. Waiting over an hour until somebody finally got it. You know, there was no real news, but I thought it'd be interesting to say the scientist Green Bank said... Nobody called. I was so disappointed. I mean, we're talking about this potential gigantic story, right? And it took over an hour for somebody to call. Over an hour. Shameful. Absolutely shameful. Anyway, just messing with you on a Friday night, folks. Let's go uh, to Twin Cities. Uh, you're on the air. Hello, Art. Hello. 
say that last caller who uh, was using mirrors to erase chemtrails. Yes. Sounds like uh, modern day Archimedes. Kind of. Yeah. It was cool. Uh, yeah. Until I thought about it for a while. Focused mirrors, erasing chemtrails. Parabolic mirrors, probably. Well, the way he had set up, it seems so, yes. I, I was wondering how he knew when he got them focused correctly. I mean, did, did you suddenly get a, a spot on the edge of the chemtrail and then sort of like, I don't know, what is it uh, where you can paint on, on windows, right? You can race it a little bit at a time, like hmm. that? I don't know. Anyway. Say, um, um, a couple of years ago, we had a uh, terrible m- mouse infestation in my house, and um, uh, I had a little bit of advice for you on trying to get proof. You take the peanut butter and put it in a corner. Mice, they they travel along the baseboards against the wall. Sir, this, this is a mouse that had enough guts to come up on my equipment and stare at me. Now, I left that on the floor all night long. Uh, there, it would have been absolutely too much for a mouse. He would have eaten it. He didn't touch it. This mouse left. Well, uh, okay. You're, well. you're saying put it on. I, I see what you're saying. But I'm, I'm saying, look, no mouse in the world could resist this. I don't care whether it's, you know, at the baseboard or out in the middle of the room. No way. It was, it was silent. Quiet in here all night long. That mouse should have eaten. All right. I I used to have pet rats too. So the i the idea that it would uh sit there staring at you doesn't isn't totally surprising to me. Yeah, but okay. This is a mouse though coming in from outside. You know, just coming in mm-hmm. and hopping up here, not more than eighteen inches from me. You don't think that's strange? Well, we first discovered. Maybe not to somebody who has rats. Yeah, used to, and until an unfortunate incident happened. Um, uh, I don't think I want to hear about that. <laughs> have you ever heard of rat bite fever? Uh, well, uh, no, um, but it doesn't sound good. No, there was a, a kid in San Diego, I think, last year who actually died from it. Oh, I thought it's, you uh, had it. No, no, my my ma actually got it. Your mom got rat bite fever? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a definite reason to uh, have rat be gone. So, yeah. I it, get uh, it. Nearly, nearly killed her, actually. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah. But you've carried a lot of guilt. Yeah. Well, actually, we had pet rats, but the one that bit her was actually one that we were holding over Christmas break that belonged to my sister's school. They were doing they were doing experiments and they got they got a pair and uh, the female they got a male and female to get babies so we had the the mom after she had the litter and of course you'd have to go in there to refill food and stuff and she's very protective of the babies and she she actually bit all of us but it was only my mom who got sick. Boy, a prison can never have enough rats, huh? No. All right. Well, listen. Thank you uh, very much for your call. And that is a sad story indeed. I don't really want rats, nor do I actually want mice. But anyway, no more to say. I think Abby Normal is gone because Abby Normal could not have. I don't want to talk about Abby anymore. Hello there. You're on the air. Hi, Art. It's great talking to you again. And to you. Hey, I am curious um, about people who believe that the revelation of ETs will destroy religious convictions and the religious foundation of the planet. Okay. I don't believe, I don't believe that because, I'm, and maybe it's just... Maybe you're religion. not a religious, a very religious person. Uh, I am a very religious person. I am a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Okay. And one of the things that our faith teaches is that God created many worlds like our world and many people on those worlds like Well, world. to be fair, sir, the question yeah. that I asked these people was, if okay. E.T. came down and um, uh, we got in communication with this creature and this intelligent being from another world 
knew absolutely nothing at all about God or even the concept of religion, how, how would that affect you? And uh, the religious people that I did ask that said it would destroy their faith. Gotcha. Okay, so that's a little bit different. It is. Okay. Then, if you don't mind, the other thing I w- wanted to talk about Well, was... wait, before you go on to the other thing, what about you? If that happened, how would that affect your faith? Um, it wouldn't, because my thought would be maybe they at one point did believe, and they just fell away from believing. Like a lapsed Catholic. <laughs> Correct. All right, all right. Anyway, you had something else. The other was I really loved your show last night about reincarnation. Oh, it and was good. I, it was a great show. I listened to it on uh, I'm a time traveler. Right. I wish I could have called in last night because I wanted to know if uh, he believed a possible interpretation for a past life regression is um, maybe these individuals aren't remembering past lives that they lived, but maybe they're remembering being guardian angels to those individuals. Huh? Well, if that's true, how uh, how can you account for the fact that many of the people who he did take back into prior lives uh, collected details? Of course, you know, tape machines were running and stuff like that, and they went and actually dug up proof of this prior life. Well, one of the other things that my faith teaches is that we lived as spirits before we came to this earth. And so my thinking is maybe, like, let's say before I came to earth, I was a guardian angel to, um, I don't know, Moses or Edison, and I was with them through many... Why would you imagine that you would be with such... Uh, people of stature like that. I, I was just throwing out names, Art. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, fine. <laughs> I'm, I don't imagine that. I was just throwing out names. <laughs> I see. All right. Name drop. <laughs> so I was just wondering, you know, maybe his interpretation of, of what these people are remembering isn't exactly on point. And I was just okay, but again, that. you're brushing right past the important part, and that is that these people gave details of their prior lives. Then uh, after the sessions, they would go and go and verify those details, and, you know, in libraries and city halls and stuff like that. that that's pretty hard-hitting. But if a spirit was assigned to be that person's guardian angel, wouldn't they have been with them throughout their life. You're really on this angel thing, huh? Well, I'm I'm just saying, maybe. Maybe. Maybe that. That's all I had to say. All right. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm just saying the evidence uh, that was gathered by these people was pretty impressive. Uh, it was Gregory Paxson last night, and you can be sure that we're going to have him on again. He was, you know, awesome. Wait, 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 wait a minute. we got to start all over again. You're not allowed to use your last name on the air. Only your first well, name. Well, actually, it's a handle. But uh, uh, the uh, station is WTWW Excellent. Uh, in, in Lebanon, Tennessee, on the banks of the Columbia, uh, 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 Cumberland River. WTWW covers the whole country and way beyond. Hey, and most nights it's just booming in here. It's a very powerful station yes. and very good quality, by the way. Even a short wave, uh, uh, considering uh, the fading and all, it's still does a great job. The, um, the really uh, interesting thing about these uh, mega structures is uh, that to build a mega structure with regular material uh, would, you know, the kind of material you or used to uh, not dark matter, but regular matter, would be very, um, very much intensive and tons and tons of material. It'd be almost impossible to collect that much. But if you were to combine just a slight trace of, uh, of regular uh, normal matter in the form of metamaterial with dark matter and dark energy, 
it would make the perfect uh, Dyson sphere because hmm. it would have virtually no mass. It'd be weightless. And then, even with a massive uh, you know, conventional construction, it would be huge, but it would still be able to drift and accidentally collide with, with uh, Tammy's star if uh, if there wasn't some control system to keep the star centered in the middle of the sphere. One would imagine and, if, uh, you know, an alien race could do all this, they probably could get the trains to run on time and avoid collisions. The way you could do that is use dark energy to repel the Dyson sphere from the central star, mm-hmm. uh, and that would effectively make a, a cerebral control loop, which is keep everything in its place and keep the star at the focus of the sphere. It would also allow you to create a wormhole and send the energy collected to other places. There's now some indication that this object is a perfect, perhaps, triangle. And if that were the case, uh, it would be sort of an indication that they want contact. In other words, you don't find triangles uh, very frequently in nature. And so we're waiting to hear if that's what it is. Yeah, that would be the perfect shape to signal geometry rather than, than you know, just simple gravity. There you have it. This is a perfect way to signal. It's also, if you were to do this with regular matter, it would create tidal forces. It would be huge, uh, which, again, t- kind of indicates they're way beyond regular matter. They're using uh, tachyonic matter, dark energy, and dark matter, which kind of ties in with your show's name very nicely. Um, it does indeed. Thank you. Thank you very much for the call. Now, it uh, it would tie in with the name of the network. Everybody's got to get this straight, right? It's the Dark Matter Network, right? Actually, the Dark Matter Digital Network, DMDN. Uh, the name of the show is Midnight in the Desert. So it is sort of the name of the, uh, the network that I think he was thinking of. Uh, let's go here to the first-time caller line and say, Hello, you're on the air. Yes. Hi. Good are evening. You, are you indeed Hi. a first-time caller? Yes, I am. Wonderful. Where are you? Yeah. I'm in Cambria, California. Okay. Yeah, on the ocean. And your first name um, is what? Sheila. Sheila. Okay, got uh-huh. it. Got it. Okay. I wanted to share with you a past life dream, which I had in 2002. All right. Right away, I'm going to ask you, you say it was a past life dream. So Correct. were you the center? In other words, were you you in the dream? Well, that's a good question, and it's really significant because that was the first thing that alerted me to the fact that it was a past life. I was the person in the dream. Um, I was inside looking out. When I had the dream, I was walking down a street... I had I was carrying a black smallish cocker spaniel. Okay. There was a man walking next to me. It was windy, it was nippy and cold. And I remember thinking, this feels weird. It, it I Sheila was in his body, but it didn't feel right. And I leaned back. We were walking down a street and there was shops to the right with glass and I leaned back and consciously looked in the glass and I saw a woman with black hair looking kind of like the 40s um, you know the the 40 look my hair was rolled up in the back and the, right. the 40s you know look sure. and the man next to me was tall he was thin he had glasses and he was leading a golden cocker spaniel and I knew instantly there was some signature that came from him, and I knew he was my husband of present day. Wow. Also. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And I went, wow. And all of a sudden, I had a download, and that's the only way I can describe it. A rush of information. Correct. And what I knew was that I was in Chicago, now, I've never been in Chicago in this <laughs> life, <laughs> and I knew we were going to a hotel, Right. and I knew that I sang in a band. Holy mackerel. Like one of the, yeah, and he was 
the band leader, or he played in the band. I wasn't quite sure. He seemed to be kind of like my boss, but not exactly. Mm-hmm. And I knew that we were intimately involved as more than just friends. And he was married, <laughs> and not to me. And as we walked toward the hotel, yes. it was, you know, the doorman that opened the door, and it was a sure. nice it's a hotel, sure. like, like in the movies. <laughs> and he said, hello, good evening, good at, and, and we walked in. and Kind of so like he'd, we, he'd, he'd seen you many, many times before. Correct. Yes. And, and, and we were, it, there was a respect in his greeting. Okay. And I knew that we were on the big band circuit, whatever that was. I knew they were in Chicago. We had been in... Uh, we started out in Florida. We went to, where was it in the south? New, not New Orleans, somewhere in there. And then it came up to Kansas City, Chicago, and we were heading to L.A. At the time, I had a friend who was kind of a, an a older, well, she was an older lady, and her husband had been um, a band leader for MGM Grand. For mm-hmm. the, the, yeah. And so she was familiar with those kind of things. She'd gone to parties with Ricky and Desi, or Desi and, rather, Desi and uh, Lucille Ball and all that, and in that crowd. So I called her up and I asked her, I said, uh, Polly, is there really a big band circuit? And she says, oh, yeah, there was a circuit. Of course. And so I know how I died. I died in pneumonia. So you, I you, know, you didn't die of, like, an angry ex-wife or present, <laughs> present wife, actually. No, oh, okay. but it's interesting because I went in. I'm, I'm, a, very cur- I'm a writer, so I, I'm very curious-minded. And um, I went in and did some Googling, you know, a searching. Yes. And I found, because I know he died of alcoholism. He was an alcoholic, so I. So you're in. telling me you Googled up your ex life? Yes, I. That I is so cool. His ex life. That is so cool, and and, and, and you know I, you're I right. Google knows everything. I found a singer. Yeah, yes. I found a singer that that was in his band, not married to him, of course, and yeah. he was married. I found a singer, uh, a band leader rather, that died. And he died of alcoholism. All right, listen, I, I got it. I got to go. We're at a break. So thank you for okay, the story. Sir. Right. Yeah. Naughty girl. But what a story. Yes, Google is good for some things, right? Come on, men and women, Skype up. Call Midnight in the Desert at MITD51. That's MITD51. You know, it never occurred to me that Google is an amazing resource. In other words, if in a dream or in whatever state you get an indication of another life with some factoid that you can check out, Google would be invaluable. So in this uh, new day and age of Google... It may well be that we will, if we begin doing it, actually nail down this whole past life business and be able to prove it. There is nothing like Google. It virtually knows everything. Well, not everything, but close, right? So if you get a detail, now there's a great way to check it out. On, uh, let's see, our first line, not that it matters, in Reno, I think you're on the air. Hello? Hello. Hi, Art. First time caller. Been listening to you for years. Um, I'm a retired airline pilot. I'm your age. I'm 71 years old. I'm 70. Oh, okay. I got you. Got you by one. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry. Any, anyhow, um, this goes back to 1958. This is a uh, past life experience, I believe. Okay. 
I when I, I was a kid in San Jose in 1958. I was 13 years old. In those days, San Jose was pretty much pruned orchards, mm-hmm. and we used to play in this old barn. And uh, on the wall of this old barn was a tombstone epitaph newspaper stuck on the wall of the uh, gunfight at the OK Corral with Wyatt Earp. Mm-hmm. Okay. In which I thought was pretty unusual. You know, why wouldn't it be a local paper? But it was a uh, tombstone epitaph. So I took it down. And I, in those days, I used to hang out at a uh, a gun shop in San Jose, a fellow by the name of Dutra. He was a real good gunsmith. And uh, I showed it to a man that was in there. And he said, can I borrow it? And I said, sure. Of course, I never got it back, right? I'm 13 years old. I was gullible. I gave it to this guy. And I never got the paper back. Okay, so here about six months ago, my wife and I are both into um, old Western guns from Italy, Uberti, and we go out in the desert. We we dress up like cowboys once a month and go out. So anyhow, I got back into studying about Wyatt Earp. Like you say, Google. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the other night, I don't know if this was a dream or what, but I got woke up and Wyatt Earp was standing by my bed. Oh, for that. well, that's, uh, you know, that's, that's not a prior life experience here. That's, that's a ghost. Wyatt Earp would be a ghost. So if Wyatt Earp was standing by your bed, That's a ghost. Sorry. <laughs> um, I would be I would be more than a little concerned about that. Um, I wonder what would trigger something like that. Just pure delusion, or it doesn't sound like any sort of prior life experience to me. It sounds like the ghost of Wyatt Earp, right? Let's go to uh, Cynthia on Skype. Hi. Hi. Um. My uh, craziest past life experience has been that I um, was having flashbacks and with uh, um, of somebody else and with uh, my flashbacks in okay. my current life. You're kind of breaking and, up uh, on us a little bit here. Is this better? Uh, well, it's it's okay as long as it's okay. Okay. That's all I can say. Um. Anyway. I did some research on the internet and I found out that this person I was having the flashbacks of was actually had existed and had died two years prior to when I was born. Wow. Um, That one counts. Uh, That sounds like a prior life to me. Like I said, that's the craziest one I've had. I've had a lot of uh, experiences that I believe were due to past lives. But that's the craziest one yeah. I've had. Well, we appreciate the craziest, uh, that's for sure. <laughs> um, there, there's really got to be something to all this, right? All this other life experience that people talk about or think represents a prior life. And yet, I'm kind of biting on the whole thing. I think that um, reincarnation is probably the way that it is. And that's I know it's going to disappoint a lot of people, and I've already got a lot of people on the computers suggesting to me that I have my uh, religious views uh, in a place where they shouldn't be. I'll leave it at that. Hello there. You're uh, on the air. Oh, good evening, Art. This is your buddy, Millie. <laughs> i got another good scary one or weird one for you here. I'm not sure if this is past lives or what it was. <laughs> But I'm going to explain it here. You be the judge. I am. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. Back in the 90s, they had uh, this thing on Discovery Channel, I think it was, that uh, they were talking about going into those little tiny uh, tunnels in the pyramids. Yes. With, with little robots. Yes. And they didn't know what it was for. Well, okay, I am pretty good at doing OBEs. I can do them awake. Not all the time, but if I get, it's like your your guest said last night that you can't be the driver and look at look at the scenery at the Makes same sense. time. That's right. So 
so yeah, so sometimes I have trouble. But that day, I had no problem. I'm, I, I obeyed myself into that hole and down in there, and I went to the door and went through, went into the one door, opened it up, went into the other door, opened it up. You're gonna laugh. I opened it up, and inside of it was a whole bunch of people. Now, these were people from older ages. I, I, there was an old lady cooking, a heavyset old lady cooking. There was an old man sitting on the table, a guy that had one leg. There was a little kid huddled up in the corner. There was this weird-looking thing. That, you mean to sound like a Star Wars bar? It, almost like, yeah. yeah. There, was, there was straw strewn around on the floor. And, and the strangest thing, when they all see me, they started singing, Hail, hail, the gang's all here. And I just, <laughs> I, now in my mind, I, you know, they kind of told me, you know, I wanted to know what it was. I went around and was kind of like, and I don't remember, it was a long time ago. And I, I was kind of talking to some of them, and they said that they're me. And I just kind of, at, at one point... In I other words, this was like oh. an entire group of people, wait, wait a minute, people who have uh, actually been you in prior lives greeting you. That, yes, that is what they told me. And at one point, I just got so freaked out, I kind of like backed out. And I know with OBEs, you back out of where you go of and where you, to your body, come. Right. you you go backwards right. into your body and I backed out of that tunnel so fast and popped back into my body. Pretty cool story. It, though. Took me, it took me about a week to tell my husband about it because I was just I didn't know what to think. But hail, hail or the gang's all here. Yes, yes, I've got it. Uh well we're having quite a Friday, aren't we? Everybody's having fun. There's my gavel. I've got it. Doesn't sound very good, does it? How's that? Also not very good. So that's kind of interesting. So these were all different ages that were greeting this lady. Pretty good stuff, actually. Let's go to uh, Kurt on Skype. Hello. Oh no. Oh yes. I've got to turn this. Up. I've got to turn this off here. One moment, please. Oh, no problem. Uh, yes, always prepared to turn off your device. That came quick. Yeah, well, uh, jumped over there. My Lord, well, uh, do you still have that Firebird that you had back in the 90s? Firebird Trans Am, sir. Yes. 98. What? 98. 6B. Oh, so cool. Oh, that is pretty. It um, is. Uh, the, uh, yeah. uh, past life. Yeah. Um, what about it? I have a past life, Titanic. You were on the Titanic? Yeah. Wow. With my girl. Mm. Um, as a boy, young boy, I had dreams of the Titanic. And then I did a research paper in junior high. And then another in 1985, in my senior year, and then after I graduated, they found it in September of 85. And then my girl that I love, her birthday, and James Cameron have the same birthday. What happened when you went down? Just cold. Cold. All I, I, I just remember icy cold. Icy cold. Got to go. Oh, hello there. First time caller line. You are on the air. Hello, Art. Hi. Hey, how are you tonight? I'm uh, attentive. What's up, sir? <laughs> hey, I just wanted to call and uh, share this weird happening that uh, has been occurring to me for about 10 years, and I really didn't... Uh, uh, I'll meet people, just random people out in public that swear that they've met me before. I don't know if it's like... One of these weird occurrences where there's like a doppelganger. <laughs> I suppose there could be somebody like that out there. Um, well, is, in, sure. in other words, you I don't know. get out a lot, but uh, your doppelganger does, so people recognize. Right. I mean, and it's just random people that swear not that they've 
just see me, but that they've met me. And uh, it hasn't been, but for the past couple of years that I've really started taking it into account, and it was really bizarre just recently. I mean, this happens probably at least once a month, sometimes up to four to five times a month. Imagine how horrible it would be if your doppelganger went around borrowing money from people and never paying them back. So, you know, all you'd get is people coming up demanding money. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, it hasn't been until recently, like within the past week, that I've had a very bizarre um, encounter that uh, involves this happening, and it was at a uh, convenience store. And okay. I came out of the convenience store and went to get into the car, and some guy flagged me down, and he just started a conversation with me. He said, hey, hey how you doing? And he said, man, it's been too long, and... and but, you know, it's been like a year since I talked to you, and I've never seen a guy before. I remember faces. And so I was, uh, he was so excited to see me, I just acted like I knew him and talked to him for about 20 minutes. And then I get in the car with my girlfriend, and he's like, he's, he's there. I said, I have no idea, but he knew me. So rather and, than uh, going through the, uh, no, sorry, I don't know you bit, you just went along. And I guess he just thinks he uh, had another conversation with the great guy that he once met, right? Yeah, and he was so excited to see me, so I didn't want to disappoint him. Actually, um, that was a very kind thing of you to do, sir. Very kind. <laughs> let's go, let's see. Um, I, I realize I'm not giving people enough time here. Let's go outside the country and uh, say, hi, Sean. Well, hello. Hello. Yeah, um, uh, never mind. Never mind? Oh, Sean. So that was just sort of a stupid trick. <laughs> oh, never mind. Really? That might have been a response to my trick, so I probably deserve that, right? Uh, let's go to, uh, I think, Brandon. Hi. Hi, Art. It's Sharon. It's, it's nice to talk to you again. Good to have you. Um. What prompted me to call this time was your show last night about um, past lives. Yes. And there's another radio show on the Dark Matter radio network called Epic Voyages. Are uh -huh. you familiar with that one? No. I'm sorry. Well, well, this um, particular show um, ha had a guest, uh, Richard House, MD, and he had talked about many things. I guess he's... He, had a book out called Between Now and When, How My Death um, Made My Life Worth Living. And he had touched on reincarnation and and what you've discussed tonight with some people um, made me think of, of this particular interview. And I think that, um, and you can tell me what you think or maybe other people will call in about the purpose of reincarnation or past lives and what drew me into this particular man's um, story um, was that I guess when we are, if we do a, a come back as as different people in different circumstances, whether it's returning as a as someone who is extremely poor or returning as someone who's extremely rich, um, makes me think that we're supposed to grow or learn from each experience to become more. I don't know, um, more enlightened or more aware or or closer somehow? Well, that's a, that. kind of the the story that always has gone along with reincarnation, that you are constantly improving yourself in each incarnation. You're a little better, striving eventually to get to perfection and then move on. Yeah, and, yeah, and I, I think... I think there's some truth to that, don't you? There may well be. I know I'm nowhere near it. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I do have to say something, too. Well, just maybe it's kind of, these shows kind of opened my mind a little more. I just recently became a, um, a Roman Catholic earlier this year. I'm an adult, obviously, but was baptized as an adult. And I... 
I'm learning, I'm still learning about the faith uh, to a large degree. There's so much to learn, but this is something that I never really considered because this gentleman seemed to be, seemed to be so insightful. He had quite the career before he decided to uh, write this book as a doctor, and, and some of the things he was saying just really made me stop and think about how, for example, ignorance leads to knowledge or suffering leads to bliss. Ignorance so leads to back, knowledge and suffering leads to bliss. bliss. Yeah. You're, you're referring to a, another incarnation. Right. I mean, if I was to return to a, maybe a, if if I go into another past life where there's extreme poverty or something like that, right, which I'm not obviously going through right now, but maybe if I had to, if I do uh, reincarnate in that type of circumstance, I guess that would be a big uh, learning experience as well, I guess. Mm -hmm. But um, I just wanted to call and share that. All right. Well, thank you very much. I don't know. I don't know what the uh, rules of reincarnation are or are not. Let's go to uh, Skype and Shark Sharky. Is that right? Sort of right. It's just a silly name. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for having me on, Mr. Sure. Bell. Sure. Happy. I uh, I just like to confess, actually, the uh, first time I called in, uh, I accidentally called you on the international line. My bad. <laughs> you mean you didn't? You really got it? earlier with the uh, the white noise. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would have called it and I was going to go nuts about it. I was really, really curious what you had to say about the superstructure. That's really been captivating me lately. Thank God uh, somebody out there noticed. <laughs> my God, did I ever notice? I went nuts about it. Well, thank goodness somebody out there did. The evil Roland almost cut me off because he thought something was going wrong with the transmission. <laughs> Him and I were on the same page there. Uh -huh. um, but uh, I remember when I when I actually first heard you uh, many many years ago, uh, many years ago to me anyway, five years ago. Uh, I used to listen to you on internet radio. Uh, I don't remember exactly what the channel was called, but Doesn't it was your matter. old recorded shows, right? And they always left out the date on them. And oh, yeah. I was trying to call your old lines because I was so captivated by the show. <laughs> and uh, of course, I never figured that out because you know they they always left the dates out. They cut that part out, right? Uh, but uh, then I learned that you were actually coming back, and I'm so thrilled to hear you again. I really am. Well, but, I'm uh, very happy to be here. And um, I think that this incarnation of the show, since we're talking about incarnations and so forth, is the best ever. It's uh, clearly, to me, the best ever. Oh, certainly. And and it was actually your show that really, really got me into thinking. I'm not a, I'm not a religious person. Um, I, was, uh, I was born to a family that had very heavy religion on both sides, uh, uh, both their mothers and their fathers, uh, very devout. And for some reason, they just dropped that. They didn't, they didn't carry on with that. Um, so the, the whole matter of the afterlife never really, it was never really something I thought about until I started listening to your show. And the more I think about it, I always try to take a very, I guess, moderate approach, you know, so that if you, <laughs> if you decided one day just to speak to somebody about it, they wouldn't, uh, sort of, you know, <laughs> blink their eyes and walk away. Well, you know, I, I think that we're upsetting a lot of people. Really, I do, uh, based on the messages that I'm getting. Because, you know, uh, you can go to a part of the Bible where it says, a man shall only live once and then be judged. That's it, you know. So and if you, you talk about it. reincarnation, they get upset. You can't avoid it. But my take on it is, is very peculiar. And, and it, it's much based off the question, you know, does when a tree falls in the forest and there's nobody around... Does it really make a sound? And yeah, it does. <laughs> and in my mind, though, I, I wonder when we observe death from an outside perspective, when we're not the one experiencing it, it's, it is to us instantaneous. The person is gone. They flatline. Mm -hmm. No more. Right. But in my mind, I wonder us as three dimensional beings, right? We experience space, we, we observe it, our mind is inside of reality. And, and I wonder, to, to their perspective, if they have one, the person who passes, is time suddenly over to them? Because, you know, that, that's the fourth dimension we have, is time. And I, I wonder, if to them, is it all over instantly? Like, I don't know. might as well the universe have ended. Final great mystery, isn't it? We don't know the answer. And that's what causes me to explore things like uh, reincarnation. 
it's just one possible answer. There are very few absolutes, right? Why we're here, what our mission is on earth, and what comes after, these are questions that probably are not going to be answered in this lifetime. So, nevertheless, the urge is to try. So whether it's reincarnation, or it's ghosts, or it's NDEs, or it's so many other things, it's all looking in the same direction. And that's kind of, you know, what's next? Going to uh, Laguna Beach, I believe. Hello. Hello, hello. Going once, going twice. Go on. Uh, to New Salem. Hi. Art Bell. That would be me. This is Bernadette from Into the Night Facebook p- fan page. Yeah, it's a pretty big fan page, huh? The, you have so many fans, they just love you. You just would not Thank believe you. it. There are so quite a few different pages out there. It's, it's amazing, but uh, Into the Night. They all love you. They all love you. Very kind. It's a it's it's an honor for me to talk to you. Thank you. I have a quick story. I, my fiance unfortunately passed away, Sorry. and I dreamt of him. And I dreamt he and I had a long conversation. And at the end of the conversation, I gave him a hug, and I said, "Well, I love you, and I guess I'll see you in the next lifetime." Like I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> And I woke up and I said, oh, my God, what do you mean next lifetime? Do I have to redo this again? Hmm. Is it a different life? I didn't know. But the end result is I'm not going to the light. Oh, really? I don't want to go to the, I don't don't, go to the light. You, in other words, you don't want to do it again. I don't want to do it again, and I think it's a trap. <laughs> Maybe we're going through the birth canal again. You and John. We're coming, huh? right, we're coming right back out. Uh-huh. You and John, well, see, it, it, that bothers me a lot. I, too. Why? Oh, well, because uh, now you have put more doubt in my mind about the correct direction upon death. Uh, I just I just think it's a trap. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to hold off. I'm not going to the light. Okay, well, you know, if you go on okay, the other... What are you gonna, What are you going to do? I haven't made up my mind yet. I guess, you know, when the moment comes, I will choose a direction. All righty, sir. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Uh Uh-huh. Have a good trip, wherever it is you're going. Wow. I had a feeling she was quite serious. She didn't want to do it again, and and in, in a way, I get that, too. And so she intends to go to the darkness. That's just one of those things that you can't unhear. There are certain things you cannot unsee, some things you cannot unhear, some things you just can't forget. That's one of them. And thanks, ma'am. I really appreciate that. Sort of backed up what John said. Let's go to our our first-time caller line. You're on the air. Hello? Hello. Hi. Um, uh, I was just calling because you're talking about the uh, past lives. And uh, I have the, this episode in my head that I've had the, from like a decade ago, I guess, that you had. It's always been running through my head, so I just thought I'd call in and uh, talk about it for a second because it's just, I think it's a pretty amazing story. Sure, go ahead. Um, it was about like a, a lady that like, I guess she was like the assistant to like a time travel, the guy, the guy that invented the time machine in the future, supposedly. And... Uh, I guess who, who are we? Who are we talking about here? She was like a lady that. Well, it was the guy that I guess was you had on the show that was about um uh, uh alien abductions. Had a lot and of guys about saying, that. Yeah, and he was studying a lot of alien alien abductions for like all the common the common. Oh, know, uh, are you talking perhaps about Doctor uh, Jacobs? Maybe that's who it was, and like he had a book about it, and it was like all the different kinds of common, you know. And this most of like, my guess have books, but uh, Doctor Jacobs yeah. talked about abduction and also talked about half human, half alien creatures that he believes are on Earth now. Uh, yeah, I think that might have been in Sounds this particular right. instance. It, 
it was a lady that was like on a uh, spaceship and she'd been abducted and put on the spaceship and there's a man with like blonde hair yes and he he would like psychically talk to her but like um not like verbally and there's like soldiers around on the ship and stuff and he would like show her on a screen her like other lives and stuff now you're kind of getting out there where i'm not so sure yeah (laughs) and in in her future life she had uh been the assistant to somebody or she was going to be the assistant to a guy that invented the time machine Mm -hmm. and uh he would take her back to like he had had a project with the time machine where he would take her back in time to this place where they which was the pyramids (laughs) i've got to be honest with you you've completely lost me (laughs) oh really (laughs) yes yes utterly (laughs) okay (laughs) it's a pretty crazy story i don't know but yeah yeah, it is. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't recall it. Um, I have had many, many people on the show telling, you know, somewhat tall tales, uh, some of which could be absolutely true or others. But that sounded like sort of a compilation of many people that we've had on the show. And I'm not exactly sure what he was talking about. Somebody else will call and say, well, I knew. <laughs> Hello, you're on the air. Hello. 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 Am I? This is Jackie. Hi, Jackie. Oh, hi. It is. That's my name in this life, and my last one it was Catherine. Really? <laughs> yes. Now, I, I, um, I'm, I'm very interested in how I, you know, you can possibly know that. I can't. Well, here's how it all started. Uh, when I was a teenager, I had a dream. Listen, hon, can you can so... you hold on? Can you hold on? I didn't realize we were this close to a break, but I have to break. Oh, yeah. They make me do it. Thank you. Okay. (laughs) We'll pause for some information and entertainment, and we'll be back with uh, Jackie. a dialogue sequence with Art Bell. Please direct your finger digits and call 1-952-225-5278. That's 1-952-CALL-ART. All right. I guess I better straighten something out. Looking at the wormhole screen, everybody's saying, Art, where are your cats? Why didn't they get the mouse? Okay, so here's the deal, folks. I built my radio studio in our guest house. We own a house adjacent to the main house, another whole house, that's right, and uh, I I bought this house originally so I could put up my antenna. Pretty weak reason to buy a house, huh? (laughs) It's actually the truth. I bought the house just so I could extend my antenna. So we thought, well, we'll use it as a guest house, and rarely have we ever had that opportunity. A few times. Uh, Bob and Sue Crane and a few others, but basically um, it stands idle. So when it came time to do the radio show again, I thought, uh, well, I certainly can't do it from the main house because my studio or radio room, which is now my amateur radio room, is adjacent to my daughter's room, who is, uh, you know, just eight years old. So I would obviously wake her up, and that led to the decision to build the studio here in the guest house. So I hope that straightens it out. Uh, I really do. And uh, let me go ahead and grab this overseas call and go back to the lady that was on the phone. You're back on the air, ma'am. Oh, okay. Um, I was uh, telling you, this is kind of how it started for me. Uh, I had a dream when I was about 18, and it was so intense. And uh, when I woke up, uh, I felt as if I had just been on fire. So I I woke up and I was in a sweat and I was panicked, you know, how how you would be if you were actually burning. And uh, then it just stuck with me. And then about seven years later or something like that, I had the same dream again. And I thought, okay, this is weird. So I started thinking about it more, like why would I be burning up and what was going on. And so it just stuck with me and I kept thinking about 
the reasons why that would be happening and, and what the room looked like. And, and I remember thinking that I wanted to open a window. And then, it, so I was like looking toward the window and it started from there. I kind of saw the inside of the room, saw the outside of the house and started seeing, you know, things about that, that experience there. And I started seeing myself sitting on a stone wall and I was laughing and I don't remember why. And then, so memory started coming back and I realized that I lived in a town called Stonewall, Mississippi. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and so I started talking to my husband, and uh, he he kind of he said it kind of sounded familiar to him too, and so we were kind of shooting ideas back and forth, <laughs> and some of the things that he remembered were what I remembered, and we realized that we knew each other then. In another life. Oh man, that's yeah. a cool story. And that so really is a cool like story. 20 years ago. Yeah, yep. and we realized we've been married before in several different lives. Holy and moly. And I've had this same dad, same brother. Yeah, and even my son, this is really hilarious. In one of my lives, one of my sons was my horse. Okay, we're going <laughs> to, I've got so little time left, so I, I'm going to have to leave it there, but that was a good story. Can you imagine a man and woman uh, sort of slowly, detail by detail, realizing that they were previously married? My goodness. Pretty good one, I would say. Um, let's go to the phone and say hi. You're on the air. Hi, Eric. This is Wes from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Hey there. Hey, how are you doing? Well. Yeah, I'd like to. Oh, go ahead. I said I'm doing well. Oh, well, <laughs> hey, I'd like to tell you about an experience I had. Um, about two years ago, I was at home sitting in a chair, and I closed my eyes, and then all of a sudden, I am on a slab, and I can't move. Mm. There are two beings to my left. They are like machine creatures, and they are communicating to me, telling me to stay calm, everything's fine, and I like ask them what they are, and they tell me we're all one. And I look around, and there's, like, this bustling city around me. There are, like, creatures moving about, like, living lives, apparently. And everything looks more real than this reality ever could. And then I... So it was a world of machines. Yeah. And I kind of feel like we're those machines living in a reality that's sort of built by them so we can experience biological life. Hmm. That's pretty interesting. Um... <laughs> You don't find you don't find uh, after that you get a craving for a little three in one oil or something. <laughs> no, but I do feel better about the afterlife. I don't feel scared or you know anything about dying. Like I do believe we continue beyond this existence for sure. Still worried. Thank you about the lady turning to the darkness. Cause said she uh, she doesn't want to do it again. Ron, hello on Skype. Hi, Eric. How's it going? It's going great. Call from X Montana. I wanted to know who told that that craft was a triangle. Sir, you're kind of all broken up on us here. Am I? Yeah, you are. Um, Something about a triangle? Yeah, you said that the Dresden sphere was shaped as a triangle. Okay, no. Um, please listen on the air. We can't continue with that. What I said was, there are some scientists, uh, this was a legit story the other day, not what I did earlier today. Um, there were some sci are some scientists who believe that if it turns out to be a triangular shape, you know, there's in essence a perfect triangle, that that would be the sign that it's an alien civilization and they wish to communicate. You would not find, uh, perfect triangles in nature. That was the, uh, uh, sort of the angle of the discussion. So if it does turn out to be essentially a perfect triangle, that's an alien civilization trying to say hello, trying to say, hey, we're out here, and so forth. We'll see. The uh, big dishes are pointed that way. Uh, let's go to uh, Royal Oaks, Mi Michigan. Royal Oak, Michigan, I guess. Hello? Uh, yes, can you hear me, Art? I hear you, sir. Um, it was a, uh, I guess about eight months ago, 
uh, I had a uh, uh, a, a strange uh, dream, and uh, in this dream, I was uh, in uh, what I think was a museum, and I uh, saw a whole bunch of uh, I think I think it was a museum or something built out of someone's home. And I saw a lot of uh, what I think were African artifacts. Okay. And uh, someone uh, handed me a business uh, card. And uh, on this card was a name that was spelled O-N-E-S-I-L-E. And I'm not quite sure how that's pronounced. And... uh, uh, I uh, remember what the, what, the, what the building sort of looked like. I'm not sure what, what the where, you know where it was, but uh, after I woke up from that dream, I googled that name, and it's a uh, it's, it's it's a first name actually, and um, it, it appears to be uh, French, and. Um, the thing is, is that uh, I, I I found several spellings of that name, uh, including O N E S I L E, as well as O N O N A Z. Okay, where, where, sir, where are we going with this? Well, my point is, is that I did not know this was a name. I had never seen this name before. I never heard this name before. I did not even know how it was pronounced. But uh, it was it was it was it was in fact genuine, and um, <clears throat> yes, I had uh, uh, it was something I'd seen in a dream or heard in a dream that I'd never heard of in real life ever okay. before. And when you checked it out, and so um, and when I checked it out, I found uh, on Ancestry dot com, I found uh, I guess it's pronounced on style. On the ceiling, uh, and I'm not sure what 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 that's all about. But it is, in fact, a, it's something I'd only, I've only I had only heard for the first time before. Uh, <clears throat> I'm I'm afraid I'm I'm all lost. I'm lost with what you're saying. Uh, I'm I'm not getting what you're saying. I mean, I hear what you're saying. I just don't get where you're going. My point is, I've I've seen or heard a name in right. a dream before. Got that? And I've never heard it in real life. I did not even know it was a, a okay. name. Now you went to Ancestry.com and you found somebody in your family with that name. Is that what you're saying? Not in my family. Not yes, not connected to you uh, at all. I, no, and. Uh, that seems significant to me, in the sense that you, you, you've you've heard a a, a, name. a name you've never heard of before, and then you find it. I, yeah. I I've got it. Okay. Well, I don't think that that necessarily adds to the conversation of reincarnation, exactly. But it was a sort of an interesting story. In uh, Las Vegas, you're on the air. Las hello, Vegas. Art. Yes. Hello. Oh, good. Uh, this is Joe on the other side of the hill. Right. Got it. Okay. Uh, well, first, I want to compliment you. Uh, you're one of the very few hosts that actually say or say your piece about global warming, and I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of you. Uh, very few people, as you know, can serve as talk radio that this is all a myth. So I applaud Well, that's because stand-up. most of talk radio is right-wing. Um Politically, You're kidding as, me! As I never a... thought. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. And secondly, your guest um, the other night with regression. I'm a very cynical person. And I'm very skeptical about a lot of things, and of course, I love your radio uh, program because it really puts those antennas up. But that gentleman was so credible and so believable because is that he would admit things that he would simply say, I don't know. And that's such a refreshing thing to hear. Yeah, I love that, radio. actually. I love it. When people don't know and actually just say, I don't know, 
I love it because too many guests, I'm sorry to say, are in the category of um, whatever you ask them, if they don't know, they'll make it up. Yeah, they bloviate. You know, uh, they, they're, they're authorities on everything, and you know, they pinpoint it. But this guy... To be fair, there you know there aren't that many authorities on uh, the whole idea of many lives or reincarnation or any of that. There's not many authorities, uh, but this fellow was really, really good. Yeah, I hope we. Ha- I sure hope you have him on again. I just want to let you know that my wife and I, our favorite thing in bed is to listen to you. <laughs> just listen to me. Well, uh, you're. Bedtime needs some work there, my friend. Uh, while I'm glad you're listening, I don't know that I'm. I'm glad that I'm your favorite thing. Uh, in that, in, anyway. Um, hello, you're on the air, Louisville, Kentucky. I think yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I was just uh, wanting to comment on the mega structure. Um, yes, sir. If you imagine a, a star like our own, and then take a, a planet size of Earth. And then you have a mega structure uh, going out about that distance. The, you know, you'd have to imagine the Earth being the size of uh, the molecule of that structure. So the amount of matter that would be required to make it, you know, would, would constitute millions, if not billions, of the entire mass of several star systems. It would. So that that alone, you know, kind of makes it unlikely. However, you can also um, it just snap your fingers and just have it appear. Poof, there it is. The gravity, uh, its own gravity, it would cause its collapse in on itself. It would fuse and in all likelihood go ahead and, uh, within just a couple minutes, create a pretty powerful singularity. In other words, Black even hole. if you could just, yeah, even if you could just magically make it appear, it wouldn't, it wouldn't last very long. It, it well, I don't know. I'm, listen, we're talking about the possibility of an alien race that would be, be able to control the power of a star as described by uh, Dr. Kaku, right? So uh, one would imagine they might have ways around these things. Mm, if, if they could manipulate the basic principles of the universe, I don't think they'd bother making megastructures. But, you know, the, I'd say the, mo- the likelihood is that what you have is a very dense cloud structure around the star that, you know, imagine like the rings of a planet like Saturn. Uh, same kind of thing, just, you know, they never formed The problem with that the theory, planet. the problem with that theory, sir, is that uh, these light um, dimming and then brightening is very sharp, indicating that it's a very sharp structure of some sort uh, where a cloud of some kind, as you're talking about, would lead to a, a much slower dimming and a much slower brightening as you came in and out of something that was of various density. Yeah, I understand. But when I say cloud, I was trying, I'm was i using that as like to explain the the density would be such as to be allowed to exist. Like uh, Basically, like the, the thickness in relation to the rings of Saturn. So even though it's very thin, uh, if you were, if Saturn was putting off light and you were getting the dimness from it, it would be very sharp in and out. Okay. Well, that remains to be seen. It's a fascinating uh, adventure we're on right now, isn't it? Uh, yeah, but but mainly, you know, it's the it's the the fact that that ma- much matter couldn't be there without itself becoming, yeah. at the very least. Be you careful know, about saying itself. couldn't be. Uh, almost anything could be. Uh, what we need to do is keep doing the science and find out what really is. Well, I would, I'm a big science fiction buff, so I would love it if there was such a thing. Uh, just, unfortunately, my physics training didn't allow for it, so. No? Um, well, uh, your physics uh, training should allow for the possibility that somebody is mm, thousands and thousands of light years ahead of us. Which they would be. In theory, if they can make something thin enough, <laughs> and I mean very thin, and but then you'd have the problem of you really wouldn't hold to it. If, if okay. it was a structure, like let's say you wanted to have it where you were on the side that was facing the star. Sir, what so do you that, think would happen if I could take my iPhone 6 back and show it to somebody in 1900? 
I'm sure they would be impressed, but it would still follow the laws of physics. It would? Not to them. Not to them, sir. Mm. To them, the laws of physics uh, at that time absolutely made impossible something that uh, complicated and small. I mean, they, they weren't even... <laughs> anyway, I, I hope you get what I'm talking about. So, no, yeah, maybe unlikely, but hold out the possibility it could be. I can't believe this program is ending. They all do this. They end too quickly. So everybody have a wonderful weekend in all 25 time zones out there from the high desert. Good night all.